Chapter 5 Timothy lies there, choking on his own blood. I run to him, but Patrick grabs my arm. You gotta keep moving, he says. No, I have to do something! I can't leave him! Yanking me in the opposite direction, Patrick clamps a hand over my mouth, muffling my screams and cries. And no matter how hard I resist, I only drift farther and farther away. Farther away from Timothy. Farther away from doing what's right. Celia sucked in a sharp breath. Throwing off the covers, she sat up, gasping for air. Another dream of their tragic mistake. Why had she picked that restaurant? Why hadn't she grabbed Patrick's phone? Insides twisting, Celia sobbed into her pillow. She couldn't keep living like this, fear suffocating her and guilt strangling her, the innocent blood soaking her dreams. When would life return to normal? One thing she did know, no matter what happened, Timothy Kimes' new normal was hobbling with crutches or rolling in a wheelchair. Wiping her eyes, she went to the fridge for a bottle of water. No sense in washing her face. Patrick wasn't here to see. She had nothing to hide. Besides, why bother? Lately, it seemed her cheeks were wet 24-7. She took a sip from her drink and breathed slowly, deeply. If she didn't get a hold of herself, she risked having a nervous breakdown or an anxiety attack. But how? How could she forget and let go as Patrick had? What exactly was going on with Patrick, his sudden mood swings? What was triggering them? Work? The hit and run? Or her? Was Patrick changing, or was she? Celia knew men were wired differently. Patrick had told her so. But still, he didn't seem all that affected from nearly killing someone. The only time he evoked emotion was whenever she brought it up. And it wasn't remorse or shame. It was anger. Shivering, Celia set her bottle on the nightstand and crawled back into bed. Maybe Patrick was trying to be strong for her. Maybe he struggled as she did. He just didn't let anyone else see. Maybe he wrestled with his feelings in the dark as she did now. She needed to talk to someone, not Patrick. He needed to get up early for work, and she feared another tongue lashing if she brought up the subject again. Not Mark. He told Patrick everything. But who did she have besides them? And no matter who Celia chose, she couldn't tell them what was really wrong. Patrick would never see her again if she let someone in on their secret. Celia went through her phone contacts. Name after name, it displayed acquaintances and distant family members. Distant emotionally, not location-wise. A few cousins she hardly knew lived in the neighboring states. Her parents resided on the east side of Texas. But those bridges weren't just burned. They were ashes. Continuing to scroll, Celia stopped at Annika's name. If you ever need to talk about anything, I'm here. You're part of the family and families look out for each other. Pursing her lips, Celia went for it. Positivity and a hint of suspicion followed Annika's every step into the diner. Hearing from Celia was good news, great news. Maybe Annika could help alleviate some of the weight Celia seemed to be carrying. Yet the suspicion yanked on Annika's conscience, like a child tugging on her sleeve, asking for candy. What if Celia had been responsible for the hit and run? What if she confessed to Annika? Calm down, don't jump to conclusions. Annika thought by now it would be easier to remove feeling from fact, emotion from common sense. But like today, she was reminded she was a human female. Once they got in their meal, Annika dove right in, into her food and into the conversation. So, what did you want to talk about? Celia glanced up shyly. You seem to have a good relationship with your boyfriend. I've been dating Patrick for a while now, and I was wondering, how do you know if he's the one? Curiosity oozed from Annika, like the hot sauce she poured over her hard shell tacos. Well, Cameron and I started out as friends first. He soon became my best friend. I know he loves me more than himself, but he loves God more than anything. She picked up a taco. Why do you ask? Celia pushed her hair over her shoulder, the brown highlights growing out. Oh, I don't know. I love Patrick, but I recently started having second thoughts. Doubts popping in my mind, but I tend to overthink everything. What's been going on? Seems like he's changing, but I know he has a lot in his mind, always stressed about work. I don't know. 
Maybe it's just me. That was vague. Time for a little digging. When did you meet him? She smiled softly, the memory tickling her mind. A few months ago. Patrick came into the salon for a haircut and soon started coming in every two weeks, always making the appointment with me. I'd work on his hair, taking more time and care than I usually would, and he would make flirty little comments, but in a sweet way, not creepy. <laughs> Annika laughed. It was always the highlight of my work day. He left me huge tips. We would always have fun, good conversations. We still do. Next thing I knew, he asked me out and I was, oh, I was on cloud nine. He's so charming, so sweet, generous, but her mouth twisted. The, lately, I see these flashes of things I don't like. He doesn't really understand me or listen to me anymore. Been snapping at me. I know he's under a lot of pressure at work, but it kind of almost scares me sometimes. Annika reached over and placed a hand on her arm. You should never be afraid of the one you love, Celia. Celia grabbed her drink, prepping to take a sip. I'm sure he's just stressed from work. Once he starts his own business, things will be better. Why are you defending him, Annika thought. Annika cleared her throat. <clears> throat> Patrick kind of sounds like my ex-BF, Maxwell. He was very charming and said all the right things. But once he stopped putting up a front, I realized he was trouble, very possessive. Really? What happened? I mean, what'd you do? I tried standing up to him, told him it was over. I even got a restraining order, but he was persistent. Once my dad stepped in, Maxwell finally backed off. Wow. Celia returned to her food, and then she asked quietly, So how did you and Cameron meet? We met at the coffee house. I have my PI license, so... He had come to discuss the possibility of me finding his birth mother. And our friendship blossomed from there. We started hanging out, getting to know each other. I eventually was successful at finding his mother. And now his mom and he are great friends. They have dinner like once a week. That's amazing. That sounds like something you only see in movies. Children reunited with their parents. Longing and grief tinged her words. Had Celia lost one of her parents? Had she been adopted? Can I ask what your family thinks of Patrick? Her lips set into a firm line. They've never met him. I'm sure they never will. Celia stabbed her salad, but she wasn't bringing any to her mouth. My dad was abusive, and my mom... She was just kind of there. I left as soon as I could and never looked back. I'm so sorry. Annika may have lost her parents, but at least she had several memories of them. Good ones. She couldn't imagine not being on speaking terms with them or being afraid of them. It's okay. That was a long time ago. It doesn't seem like it's too far from your mind or your heart, Annika thought. Sorry, I didn't mean to dump on you, Celia murmured. Annika shook her head. No, you didn't, and I don't mind. We all need a sounding board. I guess. Annika wasn't sure exactly where Celia stood in her faith. Annika had struck up a conversation when Celia came in for some hot chocolate. She had seemed interested in the Bible studies when Annika had mentioned it a few weeks ago. Soon Celia had become a part of their small bunch seated around the table. Prayers, encouraging words, and laughs filled their hour of friendship and study. Besides the time she had broken down, Celia seemed to enjoy herself, seemed intrigued. Are you doing anything Saturday? Annika asked. I don't think so. Why? Would you like to come to church with me? The sermons are really encouraging and impacting. Everyone's very friendly, and we eat a potluck meal after service. It might be the stress reliever you need. Hmm, that sounds nice. She put a hand to her forehead. Oh, wait, I forgot. I promised Patrick I'd join him at some fancy office party this Saturday, but maybe next weekend I could join you. Annika smiled. Okay, let me know. Celia toyed with her food. Could I ask you for a favor, though? Sure. Would you mind praying for me that I make the right decision about Patrick? Have the courage to tell him how I've been feeling? Annika took her hand. Of course. Closing her eyes, she bowed her head, prayed for strength, prayed for wisdom, for both of them. I have to get out of here. I can't breathe. 
Her hand in the crook of Patrick's arm, Celia walked beside him at Fuller Advertising, kept smiling and waving despite the knot in her stomach. Here, the men talked to Patrick about work, things she didn't understand. Boring. The women flirted with Patrick and then complimented Celia's outfit or her jewelry through gritted teeth. Awkward. Boring plus awkward equals nerve-wracking. Why was it so hard to tell Patrick no? As if reading her mind, Patrick gave her a warm smile. That was why. How could she say no to those chocolate brown eyes? Forever thoughtful and considerate, Patrick placed his hand over hers. You're doing fine, he whispered. I don't feel fine. He turned to her. You sick? Not yet. Those gleaming white teeth flashed her another smile. We'll leave soon, I promise. But I've got to make a good impression, keep playing their game. Just a few more minutes. He kissed her cheek. Let me talk with Fuller once more. Then I'll say our good riddances. I mean, our goodbyes. She giggled. I'll go powder my nose or something. What for? You're beautiful when you're nervous. He winked. Blushing, she squeezed his arm and then headed for the restroom to freshen up. Relieved, Patrick was in such a good mood tonight. The last time they'd spoken in person, she had seen an entirely different side of him. One that frightened her to the core. If she could only forget about the accident, if she could move on like he had, their relationship would be fine. Everything would be fine. She just had to stop thinking about it, stop bringing it up. But if she was to tell Patrick the truth of what she had done, it would be impossible to not bring up the subject. Celia entered the bathroom and checked her reflection. Turning on the faucet briefly, she wet her fingers and smoothed a few wayward strands. The door squeaked, warning her of new arrivals. Celia ducked into one of the stalls. She needed some alone time, two minutes. She stood there, readjusting the gold chain of her small purse as a clatter of clutches and eruption of giggles bombarded her. Three different voices piped up, gossiping and chattering. Did you see what Lacey's wearing? Derision coated the girl's laugh. Why did women thrive on drama, become drunk with it? She must be colorblind, the girl continued, but I love your dress. So did Patrick, she answered. What? Celia thought. Ooh, the girl sped the fire. Heart hammering, Celia peeked out the stall in between the crack. Oh no. It was Lara, Patrick's ex-girlfriend. One of the prettiest girls in the whole company. In the whole city, probably. I told you he still likes you, one of them said. Celia gripped the life out of the silver hook in the stall, her ears straining over their giggles and clicking of compacts. Lara smiled a crimson smile, touching up her lipstick, though she didn't need to. She looked perfect, confident. Celia suddenly felt so plain in her glittery dress. He's still dating that blonde, though, one girl said, and he brought her tonight to the party. That doesn't mean anything, Lara countered. You know Mr. Fuller doesn't let employees date. That's the only reason Patrick and I broke up in the first place. I know he still feels something for me. Celia's stomach bottomed out. As much as he's down in accounting, yeah, he still has a thing for you. Lucky. I bet that girl hanging on his arm is just a decoy, Laura said. And not even a pretty one. I know, talk about a beanpole. <laughs> Loud, obnoxious laughter drove nails into Celia's chest. Nose and eyes burning, she rested her forehead against the wall and stayed there until the sounds dissolved, until she was alone. Could it be true? Did Patrick still have feelings for Laura? Had those feelings recently resurfaced? Or had he never stopped liking her, and had simply picked up Celia to distract him from the pain? Or was Laura exaggerating to make herself sound special? Deep down, Celia had worried Patrick might succumb to Laura's flirtatious smile, give in to her perfume, or fall for any of the girls who worked there. Patrick was gorgeous and always dressed to the nines. She couldn't blame women for eyeing him. But how could those girls joke about something like this, about her? However, after what Celia had done to Patrick, and the fact she hadn't told him yet, maybe she deserved it. Maybe it was inevitable, her winding up alone again. Forever. And who was she kidding? Laura saw Patrick every weekday. Celia talked to him every day, but only saw him a couple of days throughout the week. With Laura being a confident and beautiful ex, who supposedly had been dumped only because of a new policy at work, Celia was no match. How could she compete with that? Once her knees stopped shaking, Celia forced herself to move. 
She couldn't hide there for the rest of the night. After she washed her hands, Celia exited. Everyone looked so beautiful compared to her, all drinking and conversing with ease, like they belonged there, like they belonged with Patrick. He approached her. There you are. You ready to go? She nodded, hoping he wouldn't notice her red-rimmed eyes. If he asked what was wrong, she'd make up an excuse. It's this new mascara. I think I'm allergic. He offered his arm. Celia took it. When they reached his car, Patrick opened her door and closed it once she was settled in. Silently, he put the car in gear and got on the feeder. Now she wished he would have noticed her tears, asked what was wrong, held her close, whispered that she was the only girl for him. He adored her. He would never leave her. Right? Patrick guided the Porsche down the highway, moonlight displaying his flawless features. Vocal cords swollen with fear and dread, Celia closed her eyes. If he asked what's wrong, I'll tell him I'm tired. That's what he's probably feeling. Just tired, thinking about work, clients, or deadlines. Or thinking about Laura. Sitting on a park bench, Annika leaned into Cameron, her head resting against his shoulder. The sun shone, a gentle breeze blew, a perfect day. Why am I so blessed? Annika asked. She heard the smile and Cameron's response. Because you're a daughter of the king. This princess feels so spoiled sometimes. I have so much. The Lord, you, friends, family. Good, stable relationships. Cameron straightened, looking at her. Why do you sound sad after saying that? I'm not. But after talking with Celia, I realize how good I really have it. It's bringing back memories of my time with Maxwell. She shuddered. My life would have been so different if I had stayed with him. Do I detect a note of regret? She hit him lightly. Ow! His chest vibrated with laughter. She smiled, but it faded. Sometimes when we talk, I just feel like crying. She seems so lonely. Well, she's got you now. She's got us, the Bible study group. And when and if she comes to church, she's got the church family. Yeah. I want her to really know God, be able to get help from him too. Just keep loving her, Annika. Keep praying. You can't force anyone to do anything. All you can do is be you. Be a good example to her. She nodded. One plants a seed, one waters. But it's God who changes them. Exactly. Annika's mind flitted back to a time she and her parents had been praying for someone specifically. They had fasted. They had abstained from food for a day to really focus on praying for that person. It had always helped them bond with the Lord and with each other more. Annika turned to him. Do you think we should fast for Celia? His eyes brightened. That's a great idea. What do you want to fast from? Food or something else? She shrugged. I don't know. TV or junk food? Coffee? Oh no, I gotta have my coffee. <laughs> she laughed with him. No, what you drink is not coffee. It's sugar. With a spoonful of coffee. Grinning, Cameron kissed her nose. Okay, how about for this whole month, we'll fast for movies and TV. Every time we want to watch something, we pray for Celia. Annika high-fived him and then linked his fingers with hers. Sounds perfect.